Hello, I'm Lunch Akupas. Joining me today is Alex, the creator of Hyper Light Drifter. Hello. And Hyper Light Drifter is a top-down action-adventure game from classics of the uh, SNES era, or similar to those. So we can go ahead and start the video. I'll give you the countdown. We'll start on go. You ready? Sure. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So... There's a lot to talk about at the beginning, so I'll just try and get through it as quickly as possible. Um, the main movement mechanic in Hyper Light Drifter is well, what we call dashing, uh, which is just every time I push the A button, I dash a little bit forward. Uh, there's a lot to talk about involving dashing. I'll get to that in a moment. I paused right there to prevent the game from bringing up the map, which it does after uh, ev every time you activate a teleport pad, which is that giant white square I was standing on. So there's four main areas, a north, south, east, and west. We'll be going east first, and as I proceed to the east, I'll explain how dashing works, or chain dashing. Uh, that's one of the power-ups I have, and this is New Game Plus, so I have only two health and all the power-ups. As for dashing, I'll generally do sets of two or sets of three. I can chain them infinitely as long as I have stamina, which is the white bar in the top left corner. Um, after your third dash, you'll bonk if you hit a wall or object. After your fourth, you'll do a slide, which I generally don't want to do, and sets of two can serve stamina over longer distances better. The so we'll see that later. Fun, Slides are fun, um, but now we have a little bit of downtime before I get to the next module, well, the first module in the game. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell us about, I guess, how the game works, or what your like intentions were with designing it? I just love those slides. <laughs> Actually, on the dash mechanics, specifically, like... Um, we didn't finally completely finalize them until about I don't know four months before the project shipped on PC because we were always playing around with timing and the chaining and everything else and we gotten used to a certain amount uh, of frames and when we changed it you really notice after a year of playing your own your own video game just subtle frame by frame changes. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, the thing I picked up back there was the first module in the area, and if you saw some strangeness going on, uh, <laughs> there'll be more of that later, so I can explain it later. Uh, but the basics is, in every area, I need four modules and uh, a pillar activated in order to unlock the final area in the game. And that little cough cut scene, uh, there's several of those in each area, and they're unskippable. Well, you can actually dash over their trigger, and skip them, or you can dash into the trigger and use a health kit and then dash again to skip them. I didn't um, even know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know you can skip them if you know where the actual region is, but usually we cover it in a, a large amount of space. Yeah. So it's um, almost impossible to skip, but I didn't know that health charge did that. That's funny. Yeah. Um, there's a fun fact involving that, but I want to talk about combat right now since we're here. Uh, so I have a gun and a sword. They each normally deal one damage. Uh, the pistol has six shots, which are the pink squares in the top left corner. Um, I regenerate ammo by dealing damage with my sword, and I can actually cancel my uh, gun shots into sword attacks and cancel either with dashes. So I can deal a lot of damage very quickly if uh, I do what we call plinking, which is fire the gun and then swing the sword. <laughs> and there's still a lot more happening. Um, and that's super tricky also, because that's, that's a pretty narrow window to shoot and you basically have to press it at the same time. Yeah. Um, what I'm doing with these red doors here is I'm essentially waiting for them uh, to reappear because when they do they create a state that will allow me to dash into the wall and go out of bounds and what that does in uh, that instance right there is it skips a door that normally requires a key to open uh, which conveniently gets us down to this module which is on our way uh, through <coughs> uh, the main part of this area. You know, the, the reason why um, we have that, it's a safety check, um, so that when you, there's certain scenarios where the player could get trapped, mm -hmm. um, and so we had a blanket safety check for when you get pushed into walls, but it made tricks like that possible, or you can't even predict that, because we never ever tried that, and nobody else did either. Yeah, we didn't even think to try that for about a month and a half after the game came out, because um, we found it on uh, some other walls, or other doors and barriers, uh, but not uh, the red doors. Uh, what I'm doing here is just another set of out of bounds, and I'm trying to dash onto a very specific spot behind the door, uh, which will trigger its loading zone. There's actually an area just under and around the door that if I dash into it will kill me instantly. 
Um, some other stuff about Out of Bounds is there's actually about a 3 to 4 second death timer, uh, which will instantly kill your character if you're out of bounds for too long. However, you can reset that by healing, falling, or using the sit command, which is down on the D-pad. <laughs> Man, see, that's, <laughs> that's the awesome stuff that I like to see. It's like, I had no idea that healing actually would reset that timer out of bounds, because, of course, like, we didn't walk around out of bounds like, intentionally like that. Yeah. I haven't mentioned any of the cool stuff I do with the modules when I pick them up, but it's okay, we have plenty of time. <laughs> There's some uh, sit-state stuff, too, that you guys found at one point, wasn't there? Yeah, on some of the earlier patches, uh, sitting actually allows you to, in certain spots, uh, you can dash out of bounds and then sit, and that will cause your character to drop at whatever point he's at, and that can let you uh, get into loading zones. That actually does not work on this patch, um, yeah, as far we as we can tell. We fixed that one up. <laughs> yeah, which is good. Um, luckily, it didn't actually change too much in the run. Especially in New Game Plus. Oh, that's something else I should mention. Well, first I'll explain this trick. So I'm going to bait one of these frogs to throw a shuriken at me, and then I'm going to use that shuriken to damage boost and cross this gap without making a bridge. Normally you have to go back and kill all those enemies, and then uh, do a small, like, few set of rooms to make the bridge raise. What is the timing on that when you're when you're dead? I'm not going to trying to take it out of the game, but I'm fascinated by it. Um, it's a very narrow window to, like, trigger the dash again. Essentially, it's... I'll describe it after I describe uh, this boss. Essentially for this boss, all that really needs to be said is that on either side you can stand in very specific spots and none of his attacks can hit you. Um, there's actually no point to healing before this boss either because all of his attacks deal 2 damage, which would uh, kill me instantly either way. As for the, uh, the shuriken toss, well this is the pillar I need to activate in this area. Anyway, as for the shuriken toss, it's... I'm not really sure how precise it is. It's just really tricky, especially in New Game Plus, because, as you know, one of the power-ups is a shield, which uh, covers you from projectiles. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of angle your dash uh, and hit at the very tip of your dash, roughly, in order to get hit and not trigger the shield, which will eat up the shuriken and prevent you from doing the skip. Yeah, the shield's only at for about four or five frames, um, and it only activates within a certain range of the character, so if you miss that range and that frame, uh, start in the dash, then you don't get the benefits of absorb. Yeah. I, we actually usually prefer that the shield doesn't activate since it also eats up stamina, and that's what a lot of the run comes down to, is stamina management. Um, for that part, uh, we, we don't see this because uh, I trigger the module cuts, or, I'm sorry, I activate the fourth module and teleport away from it uh, as the cutscene plays. Uh, which actually prevents the cutscene from finishing, so we save a little bit of time there. That house skip that you did in the, in Central, I thought I had fixed that one, but I guess oh. not. <laughs> yeah, that one's been in there since, as far as we know, day one, and that actually works on any doors of that type. Uh, you can skip this cough by, as I said earlier, dashing over the trigger, but I missed it right there. But um, that trick back in the village for uh, getting through that house, it only saves a couple of seconds and some stamina, but it's definitely worth it. But we have some downtime uh, as we move north here until I get to some of the modules. So, anything about this area or any of the areas that you'd like to point out? Um, yeah, this is actually our first um, area that we really nailed down, or we actually tried out um, way back at PAX 2014, I think PAX Prime. Um, and we laid out the entirety of the north, and it was very different back then, but we figured it was a good starting point because it was relatively linear um, compared to some of the more open-ended or like web-like um, structures of the other regions. So the north, the north is old, um, and we ended up throwing out all that work that we did. But we kept some of the design elements because uh, we actually had to reprogram the way that we created levels about you know, nine months into the project. Oh. <clears throat> the North has always seemed a bit more, I guess, fleshed out to me. It seems like there's just a little bit more there to explore than in some of the other areas. I wonder if that might be why. Yeah, I'd have probably had the most time to gestate overall. Um, and it was, it was the clearest vision in the first year or so of development as far as level structure. And we're really getting our bearings on how to design stuff in this game. We did a very good job. Uh, something to note 
about all the enemies in this area, well these birds especially, is their beams do 2 damage, which will of course kill me. So this area can be very stressful. Uh, right here, I'm going to trigger this arena, and then walk up just slightly to get the barriers to spawn, and then use them to push myself out of bounds. Oh, and <laughs> Yeah, what that skipped was uh, there's a door there that normally requires me to have three modules to open, but in this instance, I don't have to do that. Um, I guess I'll mention it now while I move up to the next arena on another module, but the trick you've been seeing me do on the modules is Essentially, during any of the cutscenes which normally happen when you activate them, if you push the map button uh, repeatedly, you can move and do other actions during this. Um, you can also crash the game when you're doing this if you heal during it, so you have to be very careful to not heal. Um, but it saves just a little bit of time because you can obviously move during the cutscene. So you'll see it in effect right here. Yeah, it's it's weird to get used to, and it has a, like some tricky timing to it, but it's not that hard. This boss fight that's coming up, that's really hard. All of his attacks will kill me instantly. Um, that's all I'll really say about it. <laughs> yeah, New Game Plus is... Um, having two health for this guy is pretty difficult. Yeah. Oh, the category is New Game Plus All Bosses, by the way. Uh, something I guess I'll explain right now is, uh, since I have two weapons, the weapon I picked up earlier after the frog boss is the shotgun. And that's important for several reasons. Uh, as you can see, it does a lot more damage than the pistol up close. It actually does the same amount as a charge slash, which is five. Um, and since I have two weapons, what this allows me to do is swap. And when you swap weapons, it instantly reloads whatever weapon you had. So, with the case of the shotgun, what I'll do is fire my gun, swing my sword, swap weapons twice to reload my shotgun, and repeat. And since I'm also swinging my sword and dealing damage with it, that reloads, or gives me more ammo to use later. Um, so this really allows us to just tear through some of the tougher enemies in this game, the bosses especially. Then activate the pillar, and we have to watch these pillar cutscenes for the east and north. So yeah, that shotgun that uh, you picked up after the frog boss, that's the blunderbuss, and it's my personal favorite weapon. Mine too, uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's melee range, really, but still it's so much fun to just blast multiple enemies um, right up close, and since you have the dash, it's, you know, projectile weapons can be important, but when, you feel, when you're feeling really dangerous... Oh, believe me, we feel very dangerous all the time in this game. <laughs> keeps me on my toes. Yeah. There used to be a nice little out of bounds to go uh, through the wall here and skip this way around, but we don't do that anymore because it's impossible now. So instead we come up here and then just do this one to skip the fight. Oh, what a trickster. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next area we'll be going to is the west. Um, my split names are all the fun names we gave the bosses, so... We named the East Bog Frogger, we named that one Priscilla the Parrot. The next one is Greybeard the Pirate or Viking, because he's a big burly man with a grey beard. And then as we move west you'll really notice the set of two conserving my stamina in these long rooms much better than if I were using sets of three dashes. If I were to do that I would actually run out of stamina at the start of this bridge room. Um, instead I'm able to maintain the, uh, these dashes more or less until I get over to this elevator which conveniently is where the first module is located in this area. And then more select buffering to get back over to the elevator. You can actually activate the elevator during that cutscene. This is my one of my favorite little set piece rooms. Yeah, I I really have to like commend your attention to detail with all these little hidden rooms and just the little settings you gave them so that it makes the player really wonder what happened here? There's there's a lot of that in this game. Is I mean, it, it shows rather than tells, which I think is part of what captures most uh, audience members. Yeah, some people um, don't necessarily love that type of storytelling all the time, um, or that it requires some more observation and interpretation. But for me, it's like that's my favorite type of storytelling. So yeah, uh, right here, what happened is that. Uh, essentially, if you dash back on a screen transition, 
on a certain frame, you will be on the area of the screen to transition, but you won't. And for whatever reason, that puts you in a state where you can clip out of bounds. It's only really useful in that spot and one other. And then I'm going to use these arena barriers to uh, clip into the trees and get into a locked room. And a module area. So I have to kill all these enemies to unlock the module, and then I have to get out of this locked room. So the question is, how do I get out? <laughs> you don't. Well, you'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break one of these larger crystals, and then it'll start flashing as it's about to reform. When it does, I'm going to start dashing and bonk on the wall. And for whatever reason, that puts my character in a state where he can enter the wall. And then I line myself up with the statue's eye and dash straight up to safety. And then we dash and continue further west. Is it supposed to be called drifting and not dashing? Sorry about the technical difficulties. Not sure what happened there with my uh, browser. Anyway, I'm going to do another crystal clip right here to skip walking around this area. And then select buffer away from this module. Alex will return shortly. Uh, those crystals that just appeared under the wolves there, they will kill me instantly as they deal 2 damage. So as I proceed over uh, to the rest of this area, I'm heading toward the boss. And for the boss fight, I want to make sure that I enter the area with as much stamina as possible, and if, prefer or if possible, full ammo for my shotgun. Um, it's going to be very important that I have that to set up the uh, quick kill on this boss. So I'm going to keep dashing, and then we're going to encounter the pink drifter again. Then I'm going to dash up and activate the door, and then go and pick up that health kit over on the left. Since I have some time while the door lowers. Do you ever take damage on this west boss? Uh, sometimes, but it's usually only one hit, if that. Um, this is probably one of my favorite bosses to fight, probably because he's... He's still a challenge, but you can actually, like, manipulate him a bit, so you have some control over him as a player. He was one of my favorites to design. Um, he's a Tanuki general, and he, um... He's my favorite death animation, and he also... He was one of the first guys we prototyped. Uh, we left him alone for almost a year and then came back to him after we designed most of the other bosses. So it was interesting to come back and see the sketch we had done for him. Like literally using stupid goofy stick figure and sketch animations to um, block him out and his moveset. This was a bit of a sloppy fight, but we get the general idea. Normally I kill him just before he does his gunshot attack, or before he does that big slam on the ground to summon the spikes to follow you. So I've activated the pillar, but I still need one more module in this area, and we're gonna go get it in one of the most dangerous rooms in New Game Plus. We call it Dogland. <laughs> Dogland. And we call it this because this room is full of wolves, and they are very pesky creatures. Crystal wolves. Those used to be poison wolves, and then we changed them. Oh, so they used to do ongoing damage. <laughs> they used to be bigger jerks with scorpion tails. Oh, great. 
I like them as they are. <laughs> um, those wolves actually, uh, after the module, normally anything in that room will go back to moving, but since I triggered the fourth module cutscene, the wolves can't come in that room with me, because they're stuck there. Uh, if I had done this before going to the boss and making the other module the fourth module, uh, the wolves could have actually attacked me while I was picking up that module and killed me during the cutscene. It would have just lost me time, um, which would have just been annoying, so I rerouted a bit. And it turns out to be faster anyway. So now we head toward the south, which is the last area. No matter what you do, it has to be the last area because it's uh, blocked by barriers. Then you have to raise the other three pillars to unlock this area. And the south has four bosses, each with their own unique twists. Um, These were the uh, backer bosses. So on our Kickstarter, we had um, a tier where you could send us, basically collaborate with us and help design a boss. Um, and they ended up being a lot of fun to do. I was originally worried that maybe some of them would be kind of off-key, uh, not really fit with the theme of the game, but we made it work, and everybody that participated in it was was pretty... Like, the silliest one wasn't even that silly at all, so it was, it was fun. I really like them. I think they fit in very well, especially in this area of, like, it, ancient futuristic, for lack of a better term, but... Okay. It was a good challenge um, for us to like take some ran like strangers' ideas and make them conform to you know our style and uh, the intention behind the bosses. Unfortunately, I do have a couple of deaths in this run. That was one of them. That one cost me about forty seconds. Um, that actually gives me a good opportunity to explain uh, how checkpoints in this game work. Uh, since this game auto-saves normally after you enter or exit every room, uh, you normally get a lot of checkpoints if you're just casually walking through each room. However, in the speedrun, we accidentally skip a lot of these checkpoints because of the fact that we move past them too quick. This room can also be troublesome, but uh, some quick shotgun blasts will deal with these robots nicely. Alternatively, uh, an ability I haven't shown off much yet is I have the ability to reflect bullets with my sword and you can actually just wait a moment for those robots to fire their three projectiles and then kill them instantly. So this boss we call Snuffles Jr. In the game files he's called Alucard. Normally he'd get a chance to fight. Actually he does get a chance in this video but normally I kill him before he ever leaves the center here. But all he really does is, at least to me, is fly around and he summons little minions to fire projectiles at me. <clears throat> so we'll activate the module and then go back to the teleport pad. And then we'll actually go back down that elevator that I went into earlier um, to get to the other boss. Because this whole area is basically divided between a left side and a right side. So we have a bit of downtime, I think, for a little bit. Um, anything about the southern area you'd like to mention? So yeah, the southern area, we this is what we did for the preview build um, back in 2014 when we gave like an early sneak peek at the game for certain backers. Um, and the intention there was basically to use as much feedback as we could um, and see where we were really at on the game and see what if we could deliver something. It was like our it was like a release before a release, you know, over a year before we actually released. But still, it helped us get our bearings on how to put it up in Steam, how to get codes out correctly, um, what it actually takes to put something into a more complete state. Because everything we'd done until then was rough. It was all it was all inside. It was all prototyping. It was all between the team, so we didn't have to put anything in public. But for me, as soon as I get something um, in front of more than a few people's eyes, that's when I start to tense up. I'm like, oh, this isn't perfect, I have to change this. But um, it was a good trial run for our final release. Um, and we ended up repurposing a lot of that uh, of those levels for the South specifically. Um, we were originally going to use it as split sections, but um, it ended up working out well um, to just use, the, use a lot of it 
um, reshape it, we reversed some levels, and we decorated the hell out of it. I really like it. I actually found out that those uh, three dirks that appear right there, you don't have to kill for this arena to uh, open. You probably yeah. knew that, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. There's some tricky locks. Um, where you don't actually have to kill every single enemy in the room. Sometimes, once in a while, that was a mistake, but usually that was intentional. There are a few rooms where, you know, instances got broken for some reason, whether it was programming or human error. Um, and then you don't really notice because that's one room out of a hundred and some odd rooms, and it's like, oh yeah, it opened, let me just go. This boss I call Ganon, even though he doesn't really bear too much sim uh, similarity to Ganon. <clears throat> but it reminded me a bit of it. <laughs> it was definitely the horse. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> fun fact, I actually, uh, once I killed him, and then I dashed away onto a section of the floor that was supposed to reappear, but it hadn't yet, and uh, then I just got stuck under the floor, <laughs> but I didn't fall, but I and I couldn't leave the room, because I couldn't go outside the boundaries of where he normally takes away the floor. It was really weird. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So we'll now proceed to the second to last boss in this area. Again, we have a lot of downtime when uh, we move on or er, toward him. Uh, which was your favorite, uh, like boss in the southern area? Um. Well, the, I I really like the um, scythe boss. He uh, he was kind of intense to design. Um, we had a lot of back and forth and iteration on what he was and wasn't going to do, or just like how hard he was compared to different versions that were way easier. Um, so he's kind of a point of contention for, for the, between the team members. Um, but he ended up being really balanced because of it, and it was, it was a, a fun process to actually have those disagreements and try and meet a good middle ground with him. He's probably my favorite of them in the south. Like this whole game, Plus I mean, he just looks scary. Yeah, he he definitely is the most menacing looking of them. Um, but he especially the scythe boss that I'm about to fight here. It reminds me, like it just makes this whole game feel mo even more like Samurai Jack, <laughs> which is a great show. It is. But um, it's very important that I have at least two shots for my shotgun for this boss. So I take extra care to make sure I have that ammo. Then we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this boss. You can actually push him before he uh, activates, <laughs> and he just kind of slides off to his death. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Poor man, never had a chance. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I used to have a whole like complicated and really cool-looking fight where I would carefully like dash in between his scythe throws. But then someone found out we could do this, and I had to do that, it. That, that makes me feel worse, because now I know that there was a cool version of that. And now it's just really stupid looking. <laughs> we like it. I mean, it's funny, but he's, again, that's the sad, that's like the, as, it is, as the make creator of the game and watching these speedruns, I'm split on some of these skips, because... Well, that, like, I understand as a speedrunner, like, yes, go fast, as fast as possible. And it's great for entertainment value because it looks so silly. Mm -hmm. But you know, I also want to see people wreck him in a more legit way, uh, you know, a more intended way, I guess. Uh, yeah, I can understand so I that. I'm I'm deeply torn on those kinds of things. It's like, oh man, that's cool to see that, but also, oh, wow, that's kind of sad to see that. That's part of why I chose to run this category, because um, like I tried the any percent variations on both the latest patch and the earlier patches and we can still skip a few of the bosses on the later patches there's actually one specific patch where we can skip literally everything aside from the final boss but luckily you don't need to worry about that oh another death 
Um, because I unfortunately got the wrong sword attack to come out right there. That'll cost me about a minute. So we also fixed up this uh, dropped input issue that was happening every once in a while um, in a more recent patch. And there was... Turned out there it had something to do with um, two inputs and then when certain enemies die, um, in particular like the robot um, and one of the other common enemies. So it was like I couldn't figure it. We couldn't figure it out for a while, but Bo sat and finally patched it up uh, later on after he took a day to look and examine frame by frame what was happening. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, if it makes you feel better, I noticed in the latest later patches, it seems to work a lot better. Yeah. Now, if I could just get it to not phantom slash when I don't want it to. <laughs> I'm coming up to the final boss of this area. I lovingly named him Sterling Archer. And he immediately just snipes me. <laughs> do you die on this guy? I do not, actually, luckily. The trip mines he summons will kill me instantly, which is why this fight can be so treacherous. It's actually a, a she... she bot. Oh, I did not know that. She has a scream at the end. I mean, technically it's a robot, so... Well, yes, but still, these things are important. How much gender can a robot really have? As much as its creators intend, I guess. <laughs> That's true. So, we have all our modules, we have activated all the pillars. Only one thing left to do, which is end this. Maybe I'll PB, maybe I won't, who knows. Really unfortunate that I lost that minute and a half in this run. But, it happens. So the only thing really left to say, as far as movement mechanics here, is there's going to be a couple of coughs coming up, which I try to skip by dashing over their triggers. Otherwise, it's just get down to the fight and end it as quickly as possible. Um, were there any, was there anything in particular you were trying to convey with like the design of this area? Oh, there's there's a lot of particulars that I'm trying to convey with it. Um, there's a. I guess the biggest thing that I wanted to push was this untouched technology from long ago, kind of enveloping you as you get deeper and deeper to the core, um, and trying to make it feel as intense and as menacing as possible without it actually being that, and without it actually being dangerous, since it is just a walk to the boss. Yeah, I remember my first time coming through this area. Especially on this bridge right here, I was just waiting for something to pop out and attack me. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of visual cues throughout this entire walk that are important to the actual story. Um, that can easily be missed, because, you know... It's all up to the player to actually observe this stuff. And when you're just trying to dash to the end of the boss, or like you're actually... Um, maybe waiting for something to attack you, then hard to sit and observe that stuff sometimes. I need to shred through this guy. Yeah. I swear, he is actually a very difficult fight if you don't know how to do this. I love the finisher. This boss was the most fun to do, because we did him last, um, and we spent a great deal of time iterating, and we had several different, re like really different versions um, that we'd started out with um, over the course of designing the game, um, but really, like, we'd taken everything we'd learned from all the other bosses 
and gave him the broadest move set and the most you know intense animations um, and yeah it just ended up being a much faster process than the others at that point because again we we learned a lot about how to design bosses in our own game mm-hmm. um, but it was a uh, it was a lot of fun to get to dig into what this guy means and all the presentational elements that are super important for you know if you want to dig into the story of stuff like what all like all these actions mean mean something yeah i think that was one reason why i decided to run this game i mean as odd as it might seem to want to speed run a game like this because of its story that that is part of what made me love it so much is just how it this game as a whole draws you into its world if you take the time to explore it which unfortunately isn't conveyed very well in the speed run but <laughs> Yeah, speedrun's not a bad story. No. Yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of times, like, yeah, and even that end attack animation is very specifically the way it is because we want to tell the player something if they're willing to, to pay attention. Yeah, I, I know with the last fight, a lot of players I've seen on message boards have wondered, is that entire final fight solely in the drifter's mind? Because in the end, he ends up on top of the giant for lack of a better word, Crystal. That's up to you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight to do this. Um, I guess before this ends, I just want to say for the GDQ staff, if they watch the whole thing of this, in no way am I trying to insinuate that I am the only runner Alex would join if we were to have this game at AGDQ. Um, I just thought this would be a fun thing to do for a submission video and help give staff an idea of what to expect should this game get accepted and should um, you know, developer commentary be desired. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you again, Alex, for joining me, and I hope yeah, you course. did enjoy it. Um, I'm, you know, if this gets into AGDQ, uh, AGDQ I'm super excited because it's, it's my favorite event. Or, well, both of the GDQs are my favorite events of the year, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm up to call in and narrate for anybody that speed runs if it gets into the into the queue so you know that would be great that'd be awesome cool i'll go ahead and stop recording this